Love is love. Love is love. Adi, yo. I think this is gonna feel very meta to talk about, but I'm editing a video. This is a video that I'll have to edit at some point. And something, a thought that just struck me was, what phase are, of the process are you in? That's, to me, the key to keeping sanity at the different stages. Because right now I'm editing this video. What stage of the process am I in right now? Because I'm sort of in between stages and <clears throat> As I walked away just to like clear my head, I was able to say, oh, I'm in the stage where I've already decided that all the clips that are in here are staying in, and now I can add music. But I needed to get to that stage in order to add music. Because what I used to do is try to do all the various stages at the same time. So I'd be like, okay, I'm gonna add this music, and now I'm gonna tweak these clips, and, da -da 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 -da. and like there's some amount of that you need to do, but to make yourself a faster editor, at least for me what I found, is you need to distinguish between the phases so that you're not sort of tweaking back and forth, back and forth, back and forth between the stages. Um, so batching things together at each stage. Um, so now I'm gonna add the music, and when I feel good about that, then I'm gonna add some sound effects, not too many, but some nice transition sounds. And then after that, I will, yeah, then I'll be able to export it, hopefully soon, because I wanna move on to the next video. Got these blocks, blue blockers, like blocks blue light. People say, oh, do they work? And I honestly don't know, <laughs> but I think they look cool. So is that wrong? I feel like that's a thing people will be like, oh, you're just wearing because they look cool. I guess that might be part of it. I think they also help with eye strain and like staring at screens all the time, which editing videos, that is something that I do, so. Okay, here's the thing about editing a video. They always reach this stage where just you're like, what am I doing? And you start to question. And that voice is helpful at certain stages if you ask it in the right way, like, oh, well, what are we doing trying to do here with this clip? But I think it's a very unhelpful voice, like, can be the voice of the critic that will, like, hold you back and prevent you from publishing your work. Like, I don't, like, there's a voice in my head right now as I edit this vlog that's like, what's the point of this video? Honestly, I don't know, but I've done projects, a lot of projects, and I'll look back a year later, or a week later even, and, I'll be like, oh, I really like this. But at the time that I was making it, I didn't like it. So I think there is something to just sort of, even if you have that voice, just to keep going, just to keep working on it and keep keep going to the next phase. And, you know, set yourself a deadline and publish it because it's never going to be perfect. Having discrete phases that you know that you're in will free you <laughs> from the tyranny of your mind. And I'm not adding sound effects to this video because I wanna make the next video, which is the one that I'm recording as we speak. And so no sound effects, but I am gonna look for those pop culture clip references and figure it out. I don't know how people pull stuff off the internet as video clips, but I'll figure it out. <sighs> so the phase of the process I'm in now is I'm looking for spots where I make like pop culture references or references to something that I want to show on the clip and but I want to do this quickly, and this is about a 10, 13 minute video, so I'm actually, I'm playing this in, in faster speed so that I can just remember like where I um, said something. So for example, here we go. Um, so I'm hitting the space bar. But then I'm also double tapping on L. And when I find a spot that I want to add something, I'm hitting M twice for marker. And I'll type the thing, the thing. And then I can like change the color. I'm making all of these blue for no reason, just so that they're all the same color. And that way I can go back later into my markers. If I go to markers, and I can actually see here, here's all the markers I made, um, which is pretty cool. But you gotta click on the timeline and than the markers. And you can see this one says frame IO clip. Oh, you can't see that because it's too small. But they each have a name. Getting things done. This is where I want to put a thing of getting things done. So that's another phase in the process. I'm just trying to keep, keep it organized because otherwise I'll be like, where did I say that thing? I don't know. Um, so just a quick editing tip for you. Yeah, 
The Practice by Seth Godin. Okay, I can't find the exact part from this book, um, but I'm gonna summarize. Inspiration is for amateurs. And I love this because I've sought inspiration for decades. And the only thing that I found actually inspires me is doing the actual thing that I wanna do. Basically, he's taken the concept and flipped it on its head that you'll get really inspired and then you'll do the thing. You'll go for the run, you'll make the art, you'll do the video. And I think the problem with this is so often we just don't feel like it. We're not gonna feel like it. And it's reversed also. You do the behavior, in reality, it's reversed. You do the behavior, and then you find yourself inspired. There's a, uh, man, uh, I need to check this one, but there's one about Steve Martin, famous comedian, that he would get up every day and start laughing in the mirror. <laughs> until he found something that he was, that, um, that made him laugh. Rather than be like, what's gonna make me laugh and getting all intellectual about it, he would just do the thing. And then he would start, he would say, oh, Here's a thing that's making me laugh. So it's totally backwards. We usually have it totally backwards. In that realm, I, would, I do want to read a section it's on page 103 of the practice for those of you who own the book. Where's your hour? If you want to get in shape, it's not difficult. Spend an hour a day running or at the gym. Do that for six months or a year. Done. That's not the difficult part. The difficult part is becoming the kind of person who goes to the gym every day. And so it is with finding your voice. The tactics, the writing, the prompts, the kind of pencil, none of them matter compared to one simple thing. Trusting yourself enough to be the kind of person who engages in the process of delivering creative work. I love this because these are two areas, and there are many areas you could apply this to, but these are two areas that I personally have been working on is working out and creative work. Speaking of working out, I was a person who worked out five days a week, and I found that doing, some of you are gonna watch that part and just like exit out of the video, but before you leave, I wanna say, I wasn't that kind of person before, and the way I became that kind of person, because I said to myself, I'm gonna work out 30 minutes a day, and that to me that was better mentally, uh, psychologically, to work out 30 minutes and then cut off the workout right at 30 minutes. I did fall off of that for a while, um, and now I'm getting back in. And I would say getting started, how to get started or get, <laughs> started is not the right word, how to continue on your path and to amp up just to like any degree, do 10 push-ups. If you can't do 10 push-ups, do nine. If you can't do nine, do eight. Can you do one push-up? If you can't do one push-up, do an assisted push-up with your knees on the floor. If you can't do that, do half a push-up. Whatever you do is something. And that's the big thing when it comes to the psychological side of it. I would say to myself, I can't make a video a day. My process takes too long. But then I would say, well, I'm not gonna make any videos. That's where the problem comes in. It's the same thing with working out. It's the same things with a lot of areas of life. We say, I can't do the perfect, bells and whistles version, so I'm just not gonna do it at all. And that's where we fail to start. I highly recommend this book though. Um, I recommend the audio book. I got the, the print one because uh, I was using it for something I was teaching. I recommend the audio book because first of all, Seth Godin has a very calming, soothing voice. He's like the mentor you wish you had, like just standing next to you as you struggle through the process. Um, but I think also it's more digestible that way. The audiobook I like a lot more because it flows better than trying to read these sort of like short tidbits. I think when they're in these short little formats without being read to you, it feels too much like, um, sort of like a coffee table book that you just like pick up and peruse through. I don't like that. I like it to be like a flowing thread that you can hold on to. Strongly recommend picking up the practice.
spinach makes the world go round. Spinach has so many good things in it, and I don't remember what they are. I just kind of like look stuff up, and then I just do it forever, which I suppose I should reassess those things sometimes, but spinach is high in like three different things that I, many different things that you need. It's one curl, it just won't stay. Um, but Popeye had it right, so I just eat it every day. But I'm gonna let this spinach wilt a little bit while we do a screen recording where we talk about weight loss, fat loss. So, screen recording, starting two, one, boom. So I'm going to my little journey here. Wow, February, February 22nd of 2020. I weighed in, I weighed 207.2 pounds. And that's when I started doing slow carb diet in earnest, meaning I was sticking to it and I committed to it. And I did it, I've been, I've done it for one year. So just some overviews here. I went from 207 pounds and I weighed myself every week. I'd weigh myself on Saturday morning. And Saturday morning because I would have eaten clean for six days, and then Saturday morning is when I would start eating garbage for the day. Binge day, uh, free day, whatever you want to call it, cheat day. Anyways, so I went from 207 to 204, <laughs> like in a week, because you drop all that water weight, I think from all the sodium and carbs, I'm not quite sure. And then I consistently lost, let's see, I went from 202, 204 to 202, 201, 200, 199, consistently lost like a pound a week, at least up to two pounds a week. Pausing there, my theory, my theory is that, you know, I had a lot of muscle tone, muscle mass um, leading up to when COVID-19 hit. And <clears throat> so it's easier to lose fat when you have more muscle on your body. So my theory is that when I started slow carb, I had a lot of more, a lot more muscle mass and that made it really easy for me to lose weight. Um, but then some wonky things, so I basically stopped kind of started going up and down in some peaks and valleys here. So I went from 196 up to 197, but then back down to 194, 195. This is not exact science, as you can tell. And then I started to plateau around 195. So th that's when I would say I stopped really working out. It was like June 2020. Really just like wasn't doing anything. I couldn't go to the gym anymore um, due to not being able to go in person. <laughs> it was like a kid, I guess I could have zoomed in somehow, but all the weights were in the weight room, not in my house. Um, but still, I, pr I pressed on. And it was summer, so I was still walking around a lot. So I got down to 194, and then I kept, I progressed, kept progressing, and I actually made it down to 191 pounds. Now I'm five foot nine. So, of course, muscle will decide, muscle and fat composition will decide, you know, more what you should weigh rather than just sort of a, a random weight that you choose arbitrarily. Um, made it down to 191. I was feeling great. That's 17 pounds that I lost in a matter of about five months. And then I think, you know, the summer started to come to an end. Work started to happen a lot more. And then it just start, the weight started creeping. The weight started creeping back on, um, and since then I've gone back up to two o four or two o two actually today. So I'm not happy about this. I'm going to turn off my screen share. Um, but some thoughts. So I'm going to turn that off. Some thoughts as we wait for the spinach to wilt. In my mind, I could hear myself saying okay, I'm going to start over. You know, I'm going to start this whole thing over. It's like, well, that's not going to happen because you can never go back in time and hit the reset button and be respawned. So really the question is not how can I restart? The question is what now? How to continue? And to me, how to continue is this. Take the lessons I've learned and not say, not throw it all, the baby out with the bathwater. Like, sure, I'm back at 204. Um, but the lessons I learned were how to stay consistent for a year doing no sugar, no carbs during the, no um, simple, so like no white bread, rice, anything like that during the week. Mostly eating vegetables and protein pretty much during the week and having one day off on the weekend. 
Um, so how to continue? This is my plan right now. Continue as I've done, but also add in working out every day for 30 minutes. Uh, summer is going to make it easier to do this. It was a long, hard winter. Um, so that's my plan to try to move every day and continue it on even when the winter gets cold. If I don't go outside, I'm gonna lose it. Oh, it's so bright. <laughs> it's the middle of the day, and I'm about to watch Tenet. I often say Tenet by accident. Um, for, for, for our podcast. And this movie, we watched this movie already, but watching it again... The, I'm dotted by the ability to speak eloquently about this film, because there's just so much in it and it totally f's your mind so i'm excited um i've got my notebook to take notes and wish me luck i think the only way i can justify this even on a day off because i want to get stuff done i've gotten a lot done today but the only way i could justify it is i think by doing some stretching and like maybe even working out while i watch the movie um otherwise i'm just gonna feel like i spent the best sunlight hours inside, which I will have. It's not, uh, it's a nice day, but it's a cold day. So let's do this. We're off. And there are no friends at dusk. You've been made. The siege is applied to them to vanish. The Russian oligarch. They don't have Not personally. Made his billions in gas. Moved them. 